Today we we'll study the anatomy of ischiorectal fossa. So what is ischiorectal fossa? It's also called as ischioanal fossa. It's a wedge-shaped fat-filled space. It's present on either side of the anal orifice. It's wedge-shaped as I said earlier. The base of this lies on the skin of the anal region in the perineum and apex is directed upwards and laterally. Why is it present? It helps in dilation of the anal canal during the defecation. Coming to the location of ischiorectal fossa. Now you can see in this diagram, the rectum is at the center. It's containing as anal canal. It's situated on either side of the anal canal below the pelvic diaphragm. And there are two fossa, one on right and another on the left. They communicate with each other behind the anal canal. What are the boundaries? Boundaries of ischiorectal fossa are as seen here. Laterally, there is a fascia covering obturator internus muscle. Observe in the diagram. This obturator internus muscle is covered by a fascia. And still outside, you can see below the ischial tuberosity. Medial relation or medial boundary is formed by the fascia covering the levator ani muscle. This is formed in pelvic diaphragm and the external anal sphincter. What's the floor? Floor is towards the skin. It is formed by the perineal skin. The roof is tapering. It's nothing but the meeting point of the fascia covering obturator internus and inferior fascia of the pelvic diaphragm. Containing the boundaries of fissurectal fossa. So anteriorly, it is the posterior border of the perineal membrane. So what is perineal membrane? See in the diagram. So above is levator ani muscle which forms the pelvic diaphragm. And below is the urogenital diaphragm. This urogenital diaphragm is covered by two fascia. What is above is super, superior fascia. And what is below the inferior one. We also call it as a perineal membrane. Posteriorly, there is sacrotuberous ligament. This ischiorectal fossa is not just a square shaped space. It has extensions, which we give the name as recesses. In front, it is the anterior recess, which is located above the urogenital diaphragm. And behind, it is deep to the sacrotuberous ligament. As I said earlier, the right and the left are communicating with each other behind the anal canal. Hence, this is a horseshoe shaped fossa. The contents of ischiorectal fossa is mainly filled with the pad of fat. Apart from that, we can also see the inferior rectal nerves and vessels, perineal branch of S4, and posterior scrotal in male and posterior labial nerves and vessels in female. Why is anatomy of ischiorectal fossa important? The reason being, this is a space which is very commonly prone for what is known as ischiorectal abscess. Why? It is very close to the anal orifice which is very rich in hair follicles and sweat glands. Obviously, due to hygienic reasons, chances of getting infected, that is the base of the hair follicles, which can grow larger, resulting in a formation of abscess. And there is a lot of dead space here. Until unless it grows and grows and becomes a very big in size, it will not be made out. So the abscess of one side now can connect with the other side, resulting in the formation of a horseshoe shaped abscess. If still if it is not treated, what will happen further? It will either burst into the anal canal or it will burst to the skin. The prior will result in the formation of fistula that opens into anal orifice. The second one results in the fistula opening to the skin. Furthermore, since the content of ischiorectal fossa is fat, suppose in a child who is highly malnourished, 
there is loss of fat from entire body now the main protection or the cushioning effect that is given to the rectum by this fossa is lost so these are the kids who are very commonly prone for the rectal prolapse apart from that we have already discussed about the apex so apex is made by the joining or the meeting point of fascia of the obturator internus and inferior fascia of the levator ani muscle in some of the people this may not meet and there can be an opening in this place which we call it as hiatus of schwalbe in such circumstances sometimes the pelvic organs can herniate through this opening resulting in a condition called as ischiorectal hernia so this is all about the anatomy of ischiorectal fossa so we have studied about the location what are the boundaries and the recesses what is present in ischiorectal fossa and what is the clinical relevance thank you